Hello, Fiona Witten from Oakville Crafts and thank you for joining me today for today's Stamping and Creating. Um, I want to share with you um, a collection of items which will be available uh, next week on the 6th. Uh, it's called a One Horse Open Sleigh Collection. Of course, a bit of a mouthful. Um, and it's uh, going to be one of the new online exclusives. So this means it's not you're not going to find it in a catalogue, um, but it is available online. I have posted um, a few pictures of the collection. Um, there are there is more coming, uh, but as a demonstrator, I was able to um, pre-order two of the um, sets, but I just decided to go with one, which is the. Um, the One Horse Open Slate collection. So um, the collection is basically made up of the stamp set um, and the dies, which I've got inside, and I'll show you those in a minute, the paper, and also the a pack of adhesive-backed snowflakes. Now, they're all available individually, or you can just buy the bundle, or you can buy the whole, the collection. Um, the, the, the reasoning for the collection is just basically Instead of having to enter uh, three different codes, you could just simply um, add one. Um, so the collection's made up of so the bundles, so that saves you the 10% and then the paper and the, um, the snowflakes. So uh, let me just double check at the, that at the moment that this is actually going out live. I'm hoping it is. Oh, it is, yeah, which is good. Brilliant. So I can just uh, ignore my laptop now. Um, right, okay, so without further ado, I will run through the collection, uh, which I've just mentioned, and then I will also um, show you some cards that I've already made. Um, I haven't used every single piece of the paper yet, um, but I've made a fair number, actually. I've made quite good inroads to this year's Christmas cards. So the stamp set is... Um, photopolymer so that means that's clear as you can see there's one here that I've used quite a bit um, already and then there are dies that go with it oops excuse me because these are all just just kind of threw them back inside the um, this oh dear, I need to get some um, there we go I need to get some um, magnetic uh, sheets so that I can, these could be held a bit better but anyway so there are some dies which will cut out various stamps so we've got the uh, tree image and, uh, we've got the horse and sleigh now this is quite big so this is a six by six piece of paper and that's just how big that image will be just so you can see so it's not quite six inches wide I would say it's probably bordering on five from the tip of the sleigh to the horse's nose so there's that then there's another tree oops caught that one which is lucky which is there. There is one for the rabbit here. And then there are additional pieces. So um, we've got another tree. We have an additional piece for the sleigh, which is the runners. And then this is another piece for the sleigh, but you could actually use it as a, an embellishment to sort of divide sentiments or something like that. So this piece here actually fits um you can't see it on here but on the stamp it would fit this curve here and i have a card where i've done that and then we have uh two pieces which you can use to make um snow banks or whatever it is that you want to and then of course there are also let me just put these over here so they clang there are also um, four sentiments. So we've got a wishing you a, a season of cheer and a happy new year. So that's great. You can put that on the front and that on the inside. Alternatively, if you want to, you could um, use a mask and not 
stamp up that portion and then just have a happy new year and then got ascending wall through it and then there's a little joyful and there's also some little dots to um, sim symbolize snowflakes for snow falling and then this is a stamp too which you can use to sort of ground things so it's uh, you can just make it as additional um, ground for like the bunny or horse's feet or, or, or trees or whatever so that's the stamp set and the bundle now the paper is to be honest to die for it makes your life so simple when it comes to card making especially christmas cards so there are 48 sheets they're all six by six um, it coordinates with a lot of different colours. So we've got basic black, boho, blue, pool party, red, white, uh, real red, wild wheat, just to name a few. So there's a lot here. So when you actually look on the um, leaflet or flyer for the bundle, it only shows one, two, three, four, six colours, but there's far more that actually it will work with. Um, and this paper is absolutely gorgeous. And as I said, it makes your life so much simpler when it comes to um, card making for Christmas cards. Um, they're all double sided. Uh, uh, most of them are, uh, well, a lot of them are landscapes. Um, so we have this one, which is uh, Misty Moonlight. And then we've got a sort of um, a wood effect on the back. This one which is very very sweet so we've got a little deer in, in the woodland and um, mossy meadow pattern on the back uh, took me a couple of minutes to work out what this is um, so it's a fox so it's a fox in the snow my fox we have a fox that comes in our garden it doesn't look like that ours is a bit more scraggly and it doesn't have a white front, but hey. And then uh, on the back, you've got a, a early espresso sort of wood effect. We have woodland, so we've got a big tree. And real red background. So this is more pool party, uh, lost lagoon, um, mossy meadow, early espresso. And one with a house, or a couple of houses, I should say, which is very sweet. And I'll show you the back of that one, real red. There you go. <laughs> it's covered that one. Um, so we've got some uh, another landscape with some houses in. Very snowy scene, and more more real red on the back. This one I'm kind of stuck as to what I'm going to actually use this one for. Um, although I do like the back so that's the back so I, can, I think I'm going to probably this is the, the one in the whole pack that I'm not sure of I'm sure there'll be someone that comes up with a complete and absolutely wonderful guard using it but I just can't figure out um, what to do with the um, you could just I guess you could just put a sentiment going across there but anyway um, I've got Knight of Navy sort of stripes we have another house uh, at night all lit up with um, little lights going up some of the trees pines and all sorts of things and then mossy meadow and uh, wild wheat i think that is on the back another snow scene with another tree trunk and a tiny little pine just growing in the middle there we've got some boulders with some snow on and trees on the back We have a meadow scene with it's snowing. So we've got hedgerow trees and things. Red on the back. This one's like not sort of um I guess sunset. I guess it could be sunrise. We just, we just don't know where this is where you're supposed to be facing, do we? But anyway, so um this is more um Misty Moonlight colour 
and Lemon Lolly, Cajun Craze. So, so there are so many different colours. Um, and then we've got Lost Lagoon pattern on the back. We have a scene where you can have the sleigh going uphill, you know, sentiment going uphill. There's all sorts of things that you could do with this one. So we've got a woodland scene again, but with a, hills, a hillside. Uh, again, we've got um, misty moonlight, sort of with white speckly dots. And then we have, last but not least, uh, we have a, a, a scene, trees. Now, the one thing is I'm not sure, I I'm, I'm think that this is just supposed to be shadows. Um, I don't think this bit here is supposed to be ice. I just think that these are the shadows of the trees. And then you've got mountains in the background and a, a, a fence that's not looking too well for itself. And then we have crumb cake on the back. So that's the paper. And as I said, you get four of each of those sheets. That's four, 48 sheets in total, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, and I said there's only one design there. I'm really not too sure what I'm going to do with, but hey, I'm sure I will work it out. Um, and then the last thing in the collection are these um, adhesive back snowflakes. Um, there are different sizes and different colours. So I'm going to open this up. Now I've used some already. Let's put that cello there. So there are two sheets in there. And then one sheet, you have one, two, three different sorts. One, two, yes. No, actually that's one and that's two. So you've got two different sorts on this sheet and you've got copper and you've got gold and you've got white. Um, so these are all pretty, so these are pretty tiny. Uh, and then these are sort of like a middle size. And then you have a sheet that has the much larger snowflakes on. And again, you've got white and gold and copper. So we ha you have in total uh, 90 snowflakes, which is a fair number. Can't keep you going for a little while. So that's what the snowflakes look like. And then as, as I mentioned that they are adhesive back. So um, I found that the best way to um, pick them up is actually to pick up the whole sheet and bend the sheet slightly and get under the um, snowflake so that you can make sure that the, it's, it's like a glue dot on the back of it. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if this is gonna, I was hoping it might actually focus on it, but it doesn't seem to want to, but hey. So that's what they look like. Maybe if I go out. Oh, there you go. That's a bit better. Obviously it doesn't like it too close, but I don't know if you can kind of make out the glue dot from that distance. But anyway, I'm going to put that back on the sheet because I don't want to use that at this precise moment in time. So those are the three items in the collection. Well, I guess four if you count the stamp set and the um, dies separately. Um, but as I said, if you buy the bundle, then um, you save 10% on that. So all the details of this will go up on um, the YouTube video later, um, together with all the photos. So um, I've made nine, as I said, uh, no, I've made eight cards so far. So the first three are just very simple where I have just allowed the um, the paper to do the talking. So some of some of this this so this this sheet of paper is cut exactly the same size as the card front. These two have slight border going around each. Now the season's greetings actually from the brightest glow stamp set, which was one of the stamps. Uh, that was available last Christmas and um, it's come back in the main catalogue. Um, so I've so I still got mine, so I use that for these these two. Um, so I just simply stamped in uh, Misty Moonlight and um, 
mossy meadow on there. And then the wishing you a season of cheer is from the horse and sleigh stamp set. So just wanted to show just how simple these cards could be, but still very, very effective. So it's just very simply stamped directly onto the paper and then added some, some of the snowflakes. I think they're very effective. And that's those three. The next three are sort of slightly stepped up from that, in that, she said, where the heck have I put them? Here we go. There's some die cutting involved. Um, and I did actually cut up some of the paper rather than, um, so these are the first two. So I just simply cut pieces, um, strips off the paper. Um, so this one here is layered onto some uh, Lost Lagoon cardstock. Uh, and then uh, Wishing You a Season of Cheer simply um, stamped it. And then I um, fussy cut it out. And then the little rabbit has been die, uh, stamped, die cut and then coloured. And then there are some... Um, snowflakes on there too so that was that one this one so these these are these are the dies now um so this is the the tree this is your um you can use as boulders or snow or whatever depending on what color you want to cut it out tis the season comes from the brightest glow and then i cut it out using uh, one of the circles from the stylish shape dies because I, I like the um the dots going around the edge and then this one i only added one simple um, snowflake and then on the inside i just used um reverse side of some of the paper so that was those two and then i decided i was going to go a little bit nuts and the third one which has die cutting on looks like this so this one I've stamped the um, the large stamp which has the uh, sleigh and the horse on. So I stamped that onto some basic white, coloured it all in. So we've got, uh, this is real red, dark real red. This is the, um, that piece that I was showing you on that die. the dies. So this piece here that I was showing you, so that's that's that piece here. So I just cut that out of some scrap gold foil. Uh, the horse is coloured in using grey granite and then I coloured the people, the hats red and various different shades of green and blue for the, um, the blanket and things. Put some red onto the horse's bridle um, stamp the wishing you a season of cheer in real red and then fussy cut it out and then I added some oh, some snowflakes so that so this is uh, evolves um, some die cutting some stamping die cutting and some coloring too and then I just put a simple piece of cardstock or paper I should say in the on the inside so those are so if I put all the three together so these are the three put that one there and that one there so these are the three that show sort of the next stage up. I guess this is one, these two are the next stage up. And then this one is like kind of, okay, let's do everything. So we're doing, we've got die cutting, we've got coloring, we've got some dimensional on it. So these all popped up on dimensionals and then some fussy cutting. So those are those three. And then I took it a stage further. Uh, where's that die and that die's there? So I want to make sure I haven't lost it. Um, and I have two to share so far. And I'm going to make a third. Oh, look, there's a snowflake. I don't know if that's dropped off somewhere or, or what. I fi I'm finding that some of the snowflakes is actually like two stuck together. In fact, actually, they're not stuck together. Um, so I keep finding random ones all over the place, which is like kind of annoying. But 
whatever. So um, my third idea was to go completely over the top and make some fun fold cards. So this is one, so this is the house in darkness with, so it's all lit up. Um, and this is a very simple um, side stepper card. So rather than cutting bits out of the middle of the card, you just make another card to go over the top, um, which makes it incredibly simple. I don't know if I can. So it's just one piece that's been scored and then another piece glued over the top of it. Um, I've put a piece of basic white on the back so you can write your, your um, greeting on there. And then these are the trees. So these have been die cut out and just simply added. So there's no, no actual stamping involved on the front, although I mean, there is a sentiment on the back. So that was the first card. The second card is a, it's a pillar card, they call it. Um, I showed one on my blog, on my, on my Facebook page the other day. So this is what it looks like when it's flat. So the whole of the frame sort of goes to, well, depending on which way, where you've glued it, this for mine, it goes dark to the left hand side. But when you pop it up, it will then look like it's in the middle. Hopefully you can see that. Um, this is a sing well, this is a single panel. So it's actually got a, um, turn it around so you can see properly. It's got a, um, a stand so that it will stand up on it. So this is a bit more complicated because it involves um, cutting apertures. Now, I'm guilty because I've used my stitched rectangles for this, which I know they've retired, but I've kept mine um, because I do want to keep using them. Uh, and they really lended themselves to, to this design of card. Um, so we've got snow here, um, which has got some Wink of Stella on it. I don't know if you can see the shine. I don't know if it will catch and then we've got two trees and then this is the one the landscape with the two houses on uh, and I used so this is actually stuck to the back panel and then you can see it through the aperture so can someone give me a thumbs up and let me know you can hear this okay so that's what that one looks like. So that's two fun fold cards that I've made. Now I'm not going to repeat these two fun folds. I'm going to make a third one. And it's a design that I, let's see if I can get this to stand up out of the way like that. Okay. It's a design that I used, um, let me show you, let me show you. Back in March for a class, March of last year that I, for a class, um, when we had the New Horizons paper out. So I'm going to recreate this card, but using um, the uh, one horse open sleigh paper, okay? Um, and it's, um, it's kind of, it's a panelled book card is about the best way to describe it. Um, and I, get, I need to decide what paper I'm going to use. So these are the three that I haven't used yet, well, th three of the sheets that I've not used yet. Um, and I think I'm gonna go with that one. So let's see where it takes us with this. I'm gonna put the rest of the paper to one side because I don't really need it at the moment. So we've got the paper. Um, now we could do, I don't have any Misty Moonlight, so we could do Early Espresso or we could do Crumb Cake. Can I see my Crumb Cake? No, I've got Early Espresso to hand, so maybe we'll just do Early Espresso. So here goes. I was going to say hold on to your hats, but it's not that. And I have a bag of pre-cut bits as well, so I can use those. 
That way you don't have to listen to me cranking handle and like stamping cut and boss machine and the table shaking. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer and put the paper to one side because I don't need it just yet. Um, I've got Mossy Meadow and I've got uh, the Expresso. I think that will look quite good against it. So I'm going to use that and put my instructions to one side. So the first thing to do is to cut the start of our base card. Um, so we're simply going to get our sheet, I've got a sheet of A4. And on the short side, so this is the one that's 21 centimetres wide, we're going to cut the whole down the whole length at 10 centimetres. Now you don't need to worry about writing the... Um, the actual size down. Um, I will put this up on in the description for the video. <clears throat> okay so then the next thing we need to do is to create the panels on the card itself. So we're going to score it at four centimeters and be careful make sure that you do just have the scoring blade and not the cutting blade. So uh, the scoring blade is the lighter grey one, so we're going to score it at four centimetres. Eight centimetres. Twelve centimetres. So that's going to give us three panels that are four centimetres wide. And then we're going to cut, uh, score it at 14.9. So that makes it which is basically half the card, so that will be. So that's our panels. And really, when it comes to um, doing this portion, that's, there's not much else to do. Let's see, let's put that out of the way up there. So we're going to score it in, sorry, score it, cut it up, not even cut it, grief. Um, fold it in half to make the base. Now this piece here, oh, I should open it up really. This piece here is gonna get glued to the back here. So I'm gonna do that first and then it's done. And I'm going to, I can then go start cutting the um, paper whilst it's drying. Now make sure that you're keeping within the lines. You don't want to glue the next panel along to the back of the card. You just want to glue that panel. So that smaller panel closest to the middle, which is actually the smallest panel to the left-hand side. So that is going to be the panel that creates like the, So if you were just making a normal book fold card, you, would, you wouldn't have done these three panels here. You would just simply do that. And then when you open it, will be like that. So I'm just going to leave that to dry for a minute. Put that there. Bring in my paper. Now I need to cut this so that the image will not only go on these three panels but it will also go here on this inside panel and it will, it will hopefully become apparent in a minute famous last words I know but hey so I'm going to cut this so that it is three and a half centimeters by ten so the ten is the from the top to the bottom so you need to kind of decide um, where you want your image to be so do you want all of the trees in and a little bit of the fence or do you want all the bottom in just to top off lop off the top of the trees. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I might cut it so that it's just the top of the fence that we see. So I'm going to do that first and get my height. Oops. It needs to be 10 centimeters. Now if I do it as 10, you're going to lose quite a lot of that. 
So let's take this down this side first so that it's just barely the top of the trees. And then this this part is where you can um, you can do what you like. Obviously, you can use whatever paper you like. You can cut, crop the image so that it's to your liking. Um, just because I've done it this way. Doesn't mean you have to. So I just need to make sure that that's 10 centimetres. Okay, so we've got like literally the top of the fence and the trees. Not sure I actually like that. But I'm gonna go with it. I think once I've got it all on the on the thing, then I'll be fine. So and I'm gonna work from the right hand edge of the paper, which means turning the paper upside down. So I want four panels that are three and a half centimetres wide. This should work because it's just literally cutting this in three and a half centimetre strips. Funnily enough, you pretty much get a tree in each bit. Maybe not that last bit, but hey, it's not going to be far out. So that's my four strips. Um, I would suggest you try and keep them in order, only because it just makes life a little bit easier for you. Um, and then I do need to actually cut um, another strip which is going to be on for that small panel so I'm just going to use some of my scrap and where is it I have a box with it all in and I've tidied it up typical is that hey right there have been two ticks I know where it is it's here I just need to find it so I'm just going to figure out what do I need. So these are all my offcuts from my pre from the previous cards that I've made. I'm not sure that I want red. I think that's too white. I would use that, but it's not quite right. So I think I'm going to use that stripey bit because I think the rest of it is just not the right colours. bits to one side. Let's throw them in the box out of the way. So again I need this to be 10 centimetres from top to bottom. And I'm going to start off with three and a half like all the others but I think I'm going to have to trim that a little bit more because that panel is not quite four in fact if I use my uh, thing it's three so maybe I'll make that two and a half is the reverse side of the um, that paper. So maybe I'll use that. That might be a little bit better. Two and a half. Right. So that's that part. So what's going to happen is that will get glued to there and then these three working from the left will get glued to here like so and then that fourth one will get glued on the inside. Now you could layer these on other cardstock but that just then means that your images will get smaller there'll be another um, cent there'll be half a centimeter smaller which um, 
for me that's kind of there's not much point to do that so I would rather keep them um, just plain paper direct onto the cardstock onto the base card so I'm going to glue these in position I may as well make use of this the reverse side of this piece It's going to be put on here. I need to make sure that I'm not going over into the next panel when you're gluing them down. But you also want to make sure that the top and bottoms are lined up. So there's no point in putting it all up there. You want to try and make sure that this image that you've cut up continues nicely right the way across. This is actually quite a quick, easy card to make and it doesn't sound it, but um, and it's only involving you know, a couple of pieces of um, paper, one piece of cardstock, and once you've made one, it's one of these ones that you can use again and again and again. And you don't have to um, use a an image like this. You could just use a piece of just patterned paper that you really, really like and cut that up and split it between the panels. So that's that image like that. And I'm going to fold this. So because it's the book fold, this first fold on the left hand side, I'm going to bring that towards me and score it. And then the next fold is away from me. And then the final fold is back towards me again. You need to make sure that you give these a really good burnish. So that's that one. That's that one. And you can open up the card. I probably can't see me doing this. So what will happen is that you can concertina this up like that and then your fourth panel will go here, like so. So when the card, so this is the point, this is the bit that the card will make the card stand. So that bit needs to get glued on. Again, you want to make sure that it's in line with this piece here. So you do want the border to the right of it, and then you want the border top and bottom. I think that's pretty much spot on there. So that when this opens up, it will It'll look like that and like that on from the top. Now you could put something on here to catch this so that it doesn't slide over the front, um, but because it's the on the inside of the card, um, I wouldn't simply because it when you if you post it, it could end up sort of making a mark on on that panel. Um, you just need to make sure that you've got a really good. Um, fold and well burnished and it, it, will, it will stay pretty much like that so that's that bit and then we need to put a panel on the inside that we can add a sentiment or some more decoration so I'm just going to put a piece of basic white on here and this Actually, I'm just going to get my ruler out. So I know I want that to be 10. How, how big is that? So that is roughly 8. So it needs to be 10 by 7.5 for it to fit in there. So that's what I'm going to cut. 
be sure that this is going to be cut at 10 from top to bottom. Yep. So I want seven and a half. Oops, excuse me. Like so. And then before I glue it, I'll double check that it fits. in there now whether you want to decorate this as well it's entirely up to you whether you want to stamp put a sentiment on there um, I think I might put a sentiment on let's see we've got and I think I might go for the and a happy new year on the inside and then I'm going to put wishing you a season of cheer on the outside so let's get this oops Two sentiments here. Uh, let's see. That's the end of Happy New Year. Now, because this is photopolymer, this stamp set, um, you do need something with a little bit of give under whatever you're stamping onto, just so that it will um, give a clean, crisp image. Sorry, I wasn't looking through my blocks, which I put somewhere again. That's just being photopolymer again, you don't want to twist the stamp going onto the block, so you just put it face down so that you can actually read the sentiment and then you can just pick it up with your acrylic block. Now I'm going to stamp this in, I think I'm going to use Misty Moonlight. Stamp that across there. I'm hoping that that's straight. I just didn't want to get my head in the way. Like that. Let's close this up. And we're going to glue that and stick, put some glue on this and stick it into the card. So you've still got plenty of space to be able to write a, a greeting to and from, lots of love and whatever. So that is the basic card. Um, now I'm going to put a sentiment on the front as well. Uh, and some other bits and pieces. I might try and use some of these up. Let's see now. I don't know what colours I've got on here though, so it could be interesting. You probably don't want to add anything here, simply because when the card folds up, you don't want to squish it. So if you're adding anything, then it needs to be on those three panels, because obviously if, if it's here and it goes over there, it'll... It won't interfere with this fold and similarly the other two. Or you could just add a sentiment. Let's see now what have I got. Probably haven't got anything in a suitable colour actually. I've got black, which is not necessarily the right colour. Got some crumb cake trees. See that's still a bit too and if I put that there, you'll see what I mean. It'll stop it from folding properly. I definitely don't want to put one of those on. What's that? That's an early espresso tree. You don't have to put anything on. It's really up to you. I, you know what? I am just going to do a sentiment and I'll show you how I'm going to fix that one. So I want, that's the piece left from that piece that I cut for the inside. And I need the stamp set with the wishing you. There we go. C. 
season of cheer. It's already been well loved. I, I think I've only stamped it once in red. Every other time it's been like early espresso or um, mossy meadow, and yeah, it's, it's just got, it goes red. Anything, any cut ink that has a bit of red in it will end up making the photopolymer stamp go red. Um, it doesn't affect how it stamps though, so don't worry about it. Again. Now I could cut that into a banner. I'm going to be brave and do that. I'm just going to fussy cut it. I'll use my trimmer to make a banner. Right. Here goes. Oops. I'm going to clear these. Oops. I was going to say clear these out of the way. I just managed to brush half of them under the... Is that this is straight? Let's just see how straight that is. Not quite. That's better. Uh, I need to take a bit off here. So that's kind of even that way. And then. Don't want to keep overdoing it until you probably end up with something that um you know, that's, I think that will do. Oh, let's see. Yeah, it's still not it's still a bit on the wonk. It's better. This is where like little guillotine comes in handy. So, right, I've got my sentiment. And I'm going to banner both ends. So I need my paper snips. Just use these ones. I'm just going to cut up the middle. Like so. And then from the points to the middle to create the banner. You could die cut, you could punch, use a square punch, you can use a banner punch. Right, so that's my sentiment, which I'm going to glue in the centre of the front. Which means, which is what makes it interesting, I'm going to end up putting a a line of glue on that fold. So that when it folds up, it will then sit like that. Can I balance it? But like that. Okay, wish me luck. I've done this before. It's possible. So I just want to put the glue, and you won't actually, believe it or not, put quite a bit because you want it to be flexible. But 
But what you don't want is to really smush it down because you want the glue to catch but not to the point where it's going to keep and then what I found is, is if you fold that and then just hold it for a second or two it will stay there like that and dry like that But mine seems to be bent, which is not so good. Hoping that that is straight. Just raise it up slightly so I can see. Oops, that doesn't work. Once it's dry, you can then sort of manipulate it a bit. But you might be better just to let it be for a second, like that. Okay. So I'm just going to put that there and pretend it's not there for the moment. Um, we've got some embellishments to put on there, and that very much depends on where you want to put them and what colour. <clears throat> so we've got early espresso and we've got blue. I think the copper would look quite nice. And we've got crumb cake here as well. Um, so let's see. I'm going to put, I'm going to be brave now. I'm going to put a snowflake on the corner here. Maybe I'll come back to that one. Put a snowflake here. One there. I'm going to put one on here in a second. I just want that to dry a little bit more. Obviously, uh, this will fit into a standard C6 envelope because that's the, the size of the base card. How's this doing? Not quite there. It doesn't normally take too long to do. So, just do that. Um, so there's that one, that one. And then we've got the side stepper one as well. So those are the three fancy fold cards. That one not quite finished, but hey, there's only one snowflake to add. And then it will be done. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing all of these. Uh, as I said, the um, actual um, new online exclusives will be out on the 6th of July. This is just one of the items or collections that will be available. There are others um, of which I have absolutely no idea what they are. But I'm looking forward to seeing them. Um, we are, oh crumbs, we're almost the end of June. So quick reminder that um, the paper sale with a 15% off the select packs, uh, that ends on the 30th. As, as does the current um, joining offer, which is uh, a fabulous £154 worth of goodies for £99. Um, so if you're interested in that, then please check it out on my my blog or um, send me an email at fiona at oakfieldcrafts.com and I can tell you some more. And uh, I think that's it for today and uh, next week it will be card and a cuppa and trisha and carol will be over at home grange hosting on my behalf and then i will be live here 2 30 in the afternoon so in the meantime uh have have fun hope the weather or hope the weather's better for you wherever you are and not as hot as it has been 
and um, I will see you next week. And any questions, uh, please let me know. Take care. Bye.